we're nearing the end of the week in Lakeland and today on day six of seven days in Lakeland I'll take you over to Paradise City which hosts a grass runway on which National Stoll allows pilots to demonstrate some very impressive flying skills. Stoll stands for short takeoff and landing and what you see here each day after the main air show is pretty spectacular. Put them in the classes. Tonight you're going to see three different classes. Bush and experimental class. That's your Huskies, your Super Cubs, maybe a certified Carbon Cup. You're going to see a Woody's Pusher tonight. When's the last time you saw one of those except for on Wikipedia? Especially 1976 Woody's Pusher. Yeah, so it's old and still kicking butt. Uh, then after that, touring class, right? Touring classes, what you and I might fly uh, at our home airport at time by 172. And you know, well in okay, what's up, everybody? Day 5, Sun and Fun 2021, here at the Husky National Stoll Demo. I'm Ryan Dombrowski, and I'm super pumped to be hanging with you all tonight. We've got a great show for you tonight, folks. You're going to see some airplanes landing short and taking off even shorter. has the big air show uh, over the main runway but uh, uh, closer to the main entrance is uh, another type of event every night on the grass runway in the Paradise City area and that's known as stole short takeoff and landing and um, it's fun to watch there's lots of airplanes that constantly do takeoffs and landings they're very very skilled pilots and uh, that's what I'm showing in this video here. And um, the organization that is on at Sun and Fun is called National Stoll. And their founder, Doug Jackson, uh, talked with me. We recorded this here. We'll uh, add this to the video. Doug, thanks for joining. And um, please, please tell us, where did, where did National Stoll come from? And, and what, is your, what is your mission statement, if you will? Thanks, Martin. Before I start, thanks for having me. Um, we started about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Uh, some friends kind of pushed me uh, to have a, a stole event here in North Texas. There were some, historically had to been a stole event down in South Texas, down Hondo. In that organization, the gentleman that had done that retired. And I reached out to him. He gave me his blessing uh, to, to do a event up here. And so, uh, I founded uh, this little organization, we called it Lone Star Stole at the time, and we put together in a period of 90 days, we, I still can't believe we pulled it off, but uh, from, from basically the Christmas, New Year holiday of 19, uh, we pulled together this whole thing by we, I mean me and my partner Tom uh, Flannery, pulled together an event and had it right in the midst of COVID breaking out in the middle of, of March. Of, 2020 up in Gainesville, Texas, and uh, weather of course kicked us in the teeth up there. If you watched any of that event, we had uh, uh, 80 competitors signed up, and only about 40, about half of them were able to get there because of the weather. Uh, we were expecting about 2,000 spectators, and about 500 it showed up. Um, but it was a resounding success. Uh, we live streamed it with Live Air Show TV. Um, I don't remember the metrics on it. We've had a lot of views, hundred and something thousand people have interacted with that. So we decided, Tom and I decided to move forward and make this a series. So we founded National Stoll. And then we were asked to uh, come down and do a competition. Of course, we didn't have anything last year after that event. And as luck would have it, uh, Sun and Fun reached out to us and said they wanted to do a winter event. Uh, down in Lakeland back in December ask us if we would do a competition down there and then uh, that was uh, a big success and they asked to ask us to come back and do demonstrations during the main Sun and Fun last week so 
here we are. We, we did events. Uh, uh, the schedule changed. We were supposed to take a break and not fly. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, but it was going so well and there was drawing such a big crowd that we, we uh, actually did the event straight through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We started out with about 500 spectators the first night, and by the last night, we were had somewhere around 2,500 people over there at Paradise City watching. So, yeah, uh, Sun really, and Fun was, as you can imagine, yeah, it just it grew every day. Really and, went, uh, went up. And, and speaking of, of the spectators, I mean, they all seemed to have a, a great time. You know, they were cheering for the pilots, they were really into it, and everyone enjoys watching planes take off and yeah. land. As a spectator, yeah watching this kind of either demonstration or, um, uh, or or competition can you can you point out a few things that we might notice if we look a little closer like one thing I noticed is how pilots use the flaps and and retract the flaps to just before touchdown to control the touchdown point a little better there's probably a number of little things like that um, can you give us some examples of uh, what we might look for to understand the technique better and the, the tips and tricks that they use yeah well first off let's, let's briefly tell the rules and then that'll kind of back us into this the rules sure. are very simple we measure your takeoff and we measure your landing and we that combined distance is your score it's a very simple uh, we have a line that you start from and then a line that you have to get over upon landing where it's called a scratch so uh, that's one of the things i love about this sport is anybody can come participate and it's very relatable to your every to your everyday pilot uh, you know Everybody loves to watch Michael Goulian and the guys with the burning holes in the sky, but that's not really relatable to the average guy. But as you saw last week, we had a guy in a 172 out there, had a blast, you know. So anybody can come do this, and it brings about the best of aviation, the, the, the literally core skills that you need to be a good pilot, which is to be able to hit a point from landing, be able to, you know, anybody can take off, but to learn to take off short takes some skill. But the landing, as we all know, that's the hard part of aviation. And this brings about the ability to, to hit a point, to be able to, to control slow flight, which I'm a huge proponent of being able to fly slow and, and do it safely. I believe too many people just fly too fast nowadays on their final approaches. So uh, so anyway, let's walk through a, a real quick, we'll just walk through, uh, yeah. uh, pick one of the competitors. Uh, I'm going to stick mainly with tail draggers because that is mainly what we see, but this applies to everyone. Uh, everyone used to remember, if you remember from your days of short field takeoff, it's bring the stick back in your lap and put 20 degrees flaps down and it'll fly off as quickly as possible. Well, we've learned during stole competition that that's not how you get the fastest takeoff in a tail wheel airplane. Because uh, you think about it, if you're at a high angle of attack on the takeoff rope, you're dragging that airplane through the air, um, and uh, it's it's not it's at a high angle of attack, so it's it's creating a huge amount of drag to get started. Not only that, but your prop is at an angle relative to the relative air, right, and it's yeah. not efficient. So you get this. So you'll see our pilots they'll immediately bring the tail up, lock the brake, bring the tail up, and then accelerate, and then uh, when they think that it's all judgment all it's all based on the field you never look at the air but when they think it'll fly they'll jerk in the flaps and pull back on the stick and bounce that off tail off the ground yeah. mm -hmm. and and uh, in the case of steve henry that's 15 or 20 feet uh, in the case of uh i think Jaden newman their little superstar gal that's 18 years old i think she her shortest one was 30 or 40 feet in a in just a bone stocks uh carving cup you know so uh so in, in the longest takeoffs you saw, like uh, I had a, a, a gentleman, uh, Warren Gobler, from, uh, originally from South Africa that flies a beautiful polished 180. And Warren was turning in amazing scores. Uh, his, his combined takeoff landing scores were down in the 300s. So 100 and something foot takeoffs and 200 foot landing. So, uh, so anyway, so, so back to what I was saying is that one of these, you see them line up on the line for a tail wheel. They'll raise the tail when they think it'll fly. They they fly off, and then our uh, our air boss guides them around the pattern. He launches the plane about every 20 seconds, and uh, they come back around. And they have to. The line is fair game. You can land on the line, and we met, we look strictly at the axle of the main landing gear, whether it's a tail wheel or a nose wheel. Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, the object is for your tire nuts to touch the ground before the axle crosses, touches the line or crosses the line. And it gets very close sometimes and we have to go to replay sometimes at a competition to, to get right down to see if they did scratch. And then we measure their landing. So the takeoff landing is the score. And uh, as far as, uh, as you were, as you touched on a while ago, everyone has their uh, everyone has their technique for landing. But the best way to get the shortest landing is just as you touch the ground, dump the flaps, and get on the brakes as, as hard as you can. And I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of my competitors, tailwheel guys, they'll put 20, 30 pounds of lead weight on the tailwheel to give them a little bit extra uh, braking action to try to keep that tail on the ground. Oh, okay. So, yeah, a lot of little tricks that. in there. Yeah. I did see them yeah, use the flaps to, to destroy lift and get on the ground the moment they cross yeah. the line or anticipation of, of crossing the line and then you're basically locking up the brakes and you can see the tires skidding over, over the grass for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, for a pilot who feels like he or she is skilled enough to uh, to do this, what, what's the way into an event like this, a demonstration or even a competition? Just like sign a, up, it's that it's simple. Just, okay. Yeah, we don't, we do not have any um, um, school they have to attend or anything. Uh, during a real competition, they'll go out and practice and then we'll have preliminaries on Friday top six of each class were stop classes. So the top 30 pilots go to the finals on Saturday. Uh, but anybody can come compete. And we have a class, there's five classes ranging from heavy touring down to LSA. And uh, it's all based on gross weight. Okay. Uh, I noticed quite a few people on the ground, um, you know, running around in, in the uh, safety vest, measuring watching organizing things how, how many people does it take are they all volunteers or t tell us about how you set up an event like this from a from a personnel point of view yeah there's a the, it's a very small organization it's tom and i my partner and then we have a, a anita got uh, got her to come anita got her to come on board as a business development officer and she's kind of behind the scenes making sure we're all where we need to be and getting sponsorships and all that stuff but tom was in the booth and they're running the audio video uh, portion of the event that we live stream out i was out there on the field just making sure everybody needed what needed what they had or had what they needed to make everything go smooth and then across the field the judges over there are all volunteers uh, my best friend brian shirley is their uh, headline judge uh, and uh, the rest of them are just guys that love what we do and we had a couple of uh, of uh, celebrity judges in this one uh, from uh, the show Air uh, airplane repo so uh, that was really fun i, I did had see kevin lacy there, yeah. and mike yeah. kennedy yeah. Uh -huh. yeah yeah okay um how about how about safety? You know, you're you're kind of uh, pushing the, the the envelope a little bit. You're flying at the limit of what the airplane can do. Um, it, do accidents happen in these types of events, or what what do you and what do the pilots do to to keep this a safe event and fun for everyone? Every day, right before we fly, we have a safety briefing about an hour before we fly. And in that briefing, uh, both I and the air boss stress, I'll speak first and the air boss goes behind me. And the one thing we stress is be safe and have fun. Don't fly past your ability. And everyone knows um, uh, to, to a point they know what they can do. And we've, to our, to our credit, we've never had a, an accident. Uh, the pilots are very safety conscious. They get the, the pilots that do this, uh, we have some new uh, guys and gals, but for the most part, they've all fairly seasoned uh, competitors in this. Um, but but by that token, I do love it when the new people come in. That's my favorite thing is to see that new face pop in. Um, but uh, what we ask them is do not do high alpha climb outs. Uh, sometimes you'll see a couple of them do that in the experimentals but they're very, very good pilots. The new guys, you'll see them just get, you don't, doesn't help your score at all to do a high off a climb out, do a high angle off climb out. Um, and it's, it's a bit dangerous. So uh, we ask them just to, uh, you know, get off the ground and then just uh, level off and build some speed. 
fly the pattern, fly your pattern at a safe speed. Um, if if you if they find out that someone is encroaching on them, uh, if they're encroaching on somebody in the pattern, uh, the air boss will typically see that and they'll have them to slow down or have the guy ahead to speed up a little bit or do some S turns or whatever it is to keep them spaced out. So by and large, it's a very well run machine. Uh, my air bosses. Uh, Jerry Drew and Johnny Moore are both FTC, uh, ATC uh, air traffic controllers, and they both have a lot of experience with Stoll. They do the Valdez uh, flying every year, uh, flying in Stoll competitions. So these guys are really good at spacing these guys and keeping them safe. Very good. Uh, final question for you, Doug. The, the, the footage we saw here is from Sun Farm 2021, and anyone seeing this might now be itching to go out and see this in person. Uh, Doug, where can we see national stall events later in 2021 for anyone who wants to have this experience live? Well, we have three more events scheduled this year. Uh, the next one is in Jennings, Louisiana. Uh, the dates are June uh, 12th and 13th, I believe. Uh, that weekend, whatever that specific weekend is. And the next one will be the first weekend of August in Brainerd, uh, Minnesota, which coincidentally is the week after Oshkosh. And then our third event will be our our, our uh, Lone Star Stole, which is our national stole uh, finals. Uh, and that will be the last weekend of September 24th, 25th, I believe, of September. So they have three more chances this year to see us. And of course, there's events all around the United States, stole events, and it's becoming very, very popular. It's the, fastest growing segment of aviation today is this off airport backcountry style flying. Yeah. yeah, easy to see why. I mean, it's it's fun to watch uh, for sure. Any, anything else? Yeah, very else relatable like... and fun. Yeah. No, anything I just want to like stress to, to people. Well, I just want to stress, first of all, thank you for having me and stress to people that this is a, uh, I think, one of the most relatable forms of the competition. And, uh, there is in aviation because uh, anybody can come out and do it. It's kind of like the flower drop or the spot landing. We're just taking the spot landing basically and taking it to a different level, if you will. You take off and then come back and get a spot and stop as quick as you can. So uh, if you have an itch to try this, uh, just sign up for an event. Go on nationalstole.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, uh, National Stole, and sign up and come out and have fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, Doug. For, uh taking the time to talk to me and uh, I'll see you at one of those events here later this year. Thank you, Mark. Take care. Thanks for coming to Paradise City with me and if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe here on YouTube. In the next and final part, we'll find out what other visitors thought of their time in Lakeland. A special thank you to my supporters on Patreon who helped make these videos possible. See you all soon in the next video.